Okay, Margaret, shall I begin? Uh, we have the right number now? Yeah, Carter, Carter just joined. Oh, awesome, yes, okay. we're good to go. Hey, I'd like to call to order the Historic Preservation Committee meeting for March 28th, 2022. It's 4.30 p.m., a virtual meeting. Um, this meeting is being held in, pers in pursuit to uh, and in compliance with ordinance number 20-A16, an ordinance to ensure the continuity of government during the COVID-19 disaster, the opportunities for the public to access and participate in the electronic meeting are posted on the Albemarle County website on the Albemarle County calendar. Participation will be in, uh, include the opportunity to comment on those matters of which comments from the public will be reviewed. Um, so I believe we do have a quorum today. Um, and I has um, everybody had an opportunity to um, review the, the minutes that were provided. And if anybody has any comments or changes or corrections to those minutes, please uh, speak now or um, someone may motion to approve the meetings, the minutes. Uh, Ross. Um, what did I forget? No, you, you're doing great. I just wanted to mention that there are, uh, there are some typos and minor revisions that um, we'd like to make in the minutes just to. Okay. Clean them up. Yeah. yeah. Won't change any of the content. Okay. So, so just some, some minor changes will be made yeah. to the meetings that, that don't uh, require any discussion. Right. Okay. All right. Then um, may we have a, a vote uh, for all those in favor to approve the, the uh, minutes, please wave or say uh, aye. Okay, um, any that oppose the minutes? Okay, the approval of the minutes pass for February's 2022 meeting. Um, first, we have on our um, agenda for today is the subcommittee updates. Chris, do you want to handle those? Sure. Um, second. Let's see, as you uh, can see on the agenda, it's just the update on um, properties that were previously documented last month that we just didn't have the information to post on the February's agenda. Right. Um, so there were th three documents that were done, 81 Stockton Ridge Place, which um, was a farmhouse located across from Mirador Farm on Route 250 West, which is classified now as Rockfish Gap Turnpike. Um, that was uh, once part of Mirador and um, um, that house was, didn't have a lot of historic fabric left. Um, I documented that. Um, Apple Tree Lane, 1225 Apple Tree Lane is, is going to be um, demolished. Um, Chris and I were, were there for that documentation and, and we, we, we did that. Um, unfortunately, they let that stay too long and um, it, it may appear from the exterior to um, be preserved. The interior was a different story. Um, it, it was not sound and had been left unattended to for too long. And then Chris and I also went out to Rue Pocket Lane, which is a very interesting structure. It was, um, I, I believe, and correct me if I'm mistaken, Chris, the, um, these new owners plan to rebuild on the same foundation that existed. Um, and I believe that that's a foundation that had already uh, been rebuilt on before. Yeah. 
So it was a very old foundation. Unfortunately, I failed to get a lot of the good measurements on the foundation, but they're gonna be keeping the foundation. But this is the second house that's gonna be on that old foundation, which was very wide and um, very impressive. So their plan is to continue uh, with the footprint, maybe with the additions, but they're gonna stay true to the um, existing foundation. Anything you want to share, Chris? No, I think that that covers it. Yeah, the foundation or the house that was built upon on Route Pocket Lane was probably thirties or forties, and like Ross said, it was probably the second house on that foundation. I think uh, the owner just said the foundation potentially dated back to the seventeen hundreds. I think yeah. she was saying. She's yeah, saying. They, they did. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry. Apple Tree Lane was a Farmington property, very right. close to the clubhouse, which was built of all the field stone that was also used um, in many of the outbuildings around the clubhouse. Actually, my great, great uncle, Donald Stevens, when he developed Farmington, they used those, those, uh, that field stone collected from the golf courses for the construction of a lot of the nearby, um, nearby structures. And then the Rue Pocket Lane was uh, on the way to Mint Springs Park. Uh, it's on the hillside, which is a kind of a northeast sloping hillside as you enter Mint Springs Road on almost to the park. And Mint Springs, of course, is a 550-acre county park, which is, if you've never been out there, it's, has some extraordinary trail systems. Ross, do you know... Um... What, what is the significance of that street name? Rue Pocket? I, I didn't ask. Um, I don't know. I didn't even Google what, what Rue is. R-U-H-R. -R. Yeah. Um, that's a good point. Um, I, didn't even, I didn't even think about that, Margaret. Just curious. Yeah, I don't even know what, yeah. I'll look, I'll look into I can that. tell you. I, I'm excited. I get to use my German uh, from, high, from high school and college. The Ruhr, it's a river in Germany. Uh, it's a whole area there. Uh, most infamous in the Second World War for heavy industrial production in the Ruhr River Valley. So it's probably uh, in reference to uh, something of German origins. So I feel like I just won a trivia uh, prize. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Well, it oversits that lovely stream that from Mint Springs, which I think begins is Licking Hole Creek. I'll have to double check that on the maps. But um, as you enter the property from Mint Springs Road, you'll cross this lovely stream um, as you approach this 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 house on the on the hillside. So it it certainly is the beginning of that valley of Mint Springs Valley. So I guess it. It resembled, um, um, you know, that, that valley in Germany and, and hence the name, I guess. Daniel, we'll have to um, find an Albemarle County coffee mug for you and get it, uh, <laughs> have it available when we get back in person. Uh, could I have a second for maybe a Stein instead? <laughs> <laughs> could I make well, a, a suggestion? In the reports about the demolition, if, if, if they've been documented through photographs, is it possible just to show us those as you're dis discussing it? I think it helps us understand a little bit about the context and the, the things we're, you know, uh, not maybe what we're losing, but, you know, just so we understand a little bit more um, tangibly what it is that's being taken down. And even be able to recognize it, you know, just in the fact that we drive up and down the roads, we go, oh, I, I, I know that place. Sure, sure. Uh, Chris, do you have those handy? I do. Hold on. If not, I mean necessarily for this go round, but just in the future, I think it would be great for us to see. I agree. I agree. Are you so, doing stock so in lane? This is Stockton Ridge Place. It's on the south side of Route 250. As you enter 
the Greenwood area on 250, the first prominent farm is Seven Oaks. It'll be on your right. Greenwood Farm on your left. And as you pass Greenwood Station Road on your right, on your left is what this used to be called Misfit. Misfit <laughs> um, was owned by Chiswell Dabney Langer, the owner of Mirador, who happens to be my great, great, great grandfather. Um, he was going to live at Misfit after he left Mirador, leaving it to one of his daughters. Um, the original house burnt at Misfit, and this was a house, I think it dates to around 1900. Um, unfortunately, it didn't have any of its historic fabric left. The um, siding was covered with vinyl. The floors were uh, vinyl and linoleum. Um, one room still had the pine floors. You can see in that bottom right picture, the uh, foundation piers were filled in with brick. I was not able to get into the basement because of the thick ice that fell off of the roof to the rear um, um, uh, crawl space door. I could not open it. So I was unable to get into the crawl space. Um, you see the beaded board there that was up in the upstairs bedrooms and along the um, staircase of, of the house and the original brick of the four chimney fireplace, two on the first floor and two on the second. Um, the addition to the rear was much later, but it was a two over two with two front doors originally. Um, and um, like I said, there was not much. It had been renovated for for a, a rental in 1973. So at that time, whatever was historic was ripped out or covered up. Um, the old tin roof uh, was now composition shingled. You can see the center chimney there in that gable, that front gable. Um, but it, it sat in a little compound of a circular drive and uh, it overlooks Stockton Creek, which is where the, after the North and the South Fork meet at Ortman Road. Um, this is just downstream. And um, I just, I took, you know, it, historically there wasn't really much there, but again, it, you can see it from Route 250 and being across from Mirador and Seven Oaks, it's, it's uh, a part of Greenwood where I grew up. So um, I was happy to go in there and and, and document this just so, mainly for the picture, so we have it for, for you know, photography sake. Um, I didn't get in the attic and look at the beams and, the, and, and, the, um, and all of that. And again, I, I couldn't even get in because of the ice, I couldn't get in the crawl space. But I thought it was important to see what we're gonna lose. And it's certainly um, on the, um, scenic byway of right route 250 that won't be seen anymore yeah thank you um, lane. apple tree lane is a residence in farmington it's very close to the hard court tennis courts um right across um the from from the t from the tennis courts um, Apple Tree Lane has about one, two, three, three houses on it. Um, and this um, front's kind of on the, the first fairway. Um, and um, it had been purchased and gutted and sat gutted for quite a while. Um, Hugh Wilson um, lived there before it was, did the last remodel there. He was a um, a uh, director, produce, Hollywood director, producer. I think he did the Seven Wives Club and some other big, big time movies. Um, him and his wife renovated this structure. Actually, they moved from um, Keswick, um, from Edgewood Farm, which is now Keswick Vineyards. They moved from there, Edgewood and Keswick, across from Castle Hill, to this property, renovated it. Then a developer, Richard Spurzum, bought it, gutted it, never um, never uh, uh, restored it or renovated it and left it boarded up. Um, and the weather got the best of it. It had a slate roof. Um, see all the field stone. Um, they tore off all the newer additions with the idea that they would start over 
um, from the core and um, never did it. The uh, new owners who are now living in the guest house um, had always planned to redo this house. And uh, it, it, it was just uh, too daunting of a, of a project because of the structural integrity of the, of the, of the house. Um, but a lot of stone throughout the foundation, um, but they are gonna um, just start over um, all together on that. But that's um, right near the tennis courts at Farmington near the practice uh, putting greens. And the last one. And then of course I have floor plans. I did floor plans for yeah. each of those properties. Um, Apple tree, we already had a lot of those from the, from the county. And I found an old real estate brochure with, um, with the floor plans as well. Um, so Chris, how will people be able to find those on our website if they'd like to go back and look at these closer? It's the agenda would be the first place, but there might be, as we kind of rethink this website might be a better, more direct place to kind of have them on the Historic Preservation Committee. So, so when you sent out the agenda, we could have clicked on these and seen the reports? Right, yes. Okay, uh -huh. does that answer? Um, so Rural Pocket Lane, see the old foundation? It is a stout foundation. Um, it was every bit of uh, about 16 inches wide. Um, I think this was probably late, I don't know, 20s to 40s. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's what my guess would be. And um, But the original foundation was much, much older. Um, and it's just on a kind of a sloping hillside um, overlooking that valley and, and the stream below. Um, but these, these are the interior shots with um, an old uh, oil, hot water radiator heating system, a lot of neat casement windows, um, plaster and lath throughout um, a first floor full bath. And then there was a, a large bedroom upstairs with a full bath. Um, that's part of the stonework in the basement that was just remarkable. The basement was um, something to behold. It was a, a lot of a lot of stone. Um, the old kitchen, and that's just uh, looks like a four-year-old floor plan, as in a four-year-old did it. <laughs> um, and um, but anyway, Follow yeah. If you if y'all click on the uh, agenda, um, those will will come up. Um, a lot of times, we we try to look at more of the characteristics that age a house, as in the beams and the crawl space and and um, things like that. Um, I I didn't really do much of that in these last documentations. Um, it was more of a documentation so we could kind of remember it more in pictures and floor plans. <clears throat> so where does this information reside? Assuming that, I mean, I think it would be hard for anyone to just stumble across it through an agenda of a past meeting. Can we, is that part of our purview to, to archive this and make it available? Absolutely. Be more direct and kind of more to the point, find a, some somewhere to put it on the Historic Preservation Committee website. And I think we've done how many so far? About 25 or so? Maybe more, more than that over the last couple of years. Yeah, the last couple of years, definitely. Probably, probably more, yeah, I think more. I have to look, we'll have to look at it. We're, we're very lucky because Chris is learning how to be a web editor for the planning. Yeah. So um, hopefully um, we'll be able to um, maybe make some of the um, website changes um, that we've been wanting to do maybe a little more quickly um, yeah. as, as Chris gets up to speed on how it all works. Great. Yeah. If you have suggestions on like where on the website 
the, um, the demo uh, documentation um, should appear, we'd be happy to have your suggestions. Alrighty, should we move on to the discussion items? Margaret? Sure, yes. So um, last month, um, we talked about the um, comp plan, historic preservation plan updates. And the, we, the question last month uh, was about um, what's been accomplished and really appreciate the um, conversation that we had. I look back over those, um, my notes and the minutes from that meeting. I think there were a lot of good comments that were made. Um, this month, um, the question is more about um, what's been challenging. Um, so um, since the Historic Preservation Plan was adopted back in 2000, um, what challenges um, have we been facing? What has sort of slowed down progress or stopped progress? Um, and even for those who are um, newer to the committee, um, who, who haven't been around for years, um, you have been with the committee for uh, at least a couple of months. Um, you know, what do you see as, as the challenges that are facing the committee and, and facing the county in protecting historic resources and in achieving the goals um, that we've got listed in the, the comp plan and historic preservation plan? So I'll just leave it open um, to discussion and um, um, take a notes and I'm happy to hear comments. We need an ordinance. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, we need an ordinance. Do you want to expand on that? Yeah. Um, Margaret, if we had an ordinance, we could uh, get state funding for projects, or we would be more prioritized for state funding for projects. I know we've got some in the past anyway. And we would have more control over demolitions, over things that happen, and we would become a more important part of the County's comp plan because we would be, we would fit if we had a historic preservation uh, ordinance that would kind of, you know, fit in with the historic preservation plan, which would, uh, you know, be good to have with the comp plan update. Anybody want to add on to that? So Betsy, in the idea of an ordinance, you're saying that the, com the committee would have more ability to affect um, decisions about demolition? Is that what, is that what you're well, heading towards? Generally, there is a, a demolition uh, provision in an ordinance that gives uh, a certain length of time for a reasonable solution to be to be uh, put, put forth to save the property. And then if it can't be saved during that period of time, then the owner has permission to demolish it. It's basically a delaying tactic, but it's effective in some cases. It is um, typical for a uh, historic preservation ordinance to have a, a demolition clause that really um, puts a, um, uh, uh, a span of time on it um, where the owner um, would be required to um, attempt to sell the, um, the property. Um, and that would also, that, that um, time would allow for documentation as well. I want to take B. Hi. Yes, I would like to actually uh, see uh, if other if there have been other ordinances in the state of Virginia, because I know with the Dillon rule, um, we face challenges and uh, it, how difficult or easy that would be. I know it's, it's not going to be immediate, you know, an ordinance takes a while, but um, I would like to see where, out, where else has it been passed that it's been successful? Um, we're heading into a uh, legislative control 
that may not want to prohibit people from being able to sell or demolish things. So I'm, I'm not sure um, how much we would be able to do, but it would be interesting to at least explore. And uh, maybe that's something, you know, we can look into certainly. I can, I can pose that question also. But I was thinking, I know, and I, I don't know if this is the right time to bring it up, Ross and, and Margaret, but I know you all talked about a getting a FTE part-time or full-time FTE, which I think will be, frankly, I'm just being point blank, problematic at best. Um, however, what would be wrong with starting a historic preservation foundation? Because we have a police foundation. We are looking at perhaps doing a parks foundation. And we have so many people in Albemarle County and Charlottesville that want to preserve things that are older that I say that because we have people of different interests. So I think developing perhaps a historic preservation foundation, we get extra money, you know, people donate monies and then we use those monies to accomplish uh, some of our goals. Well, there is Preservation Piedmont, which is a very active organization here locally. Okay. Uh, that, that kind of manages that that exact thing, um, just to, to name a few. Can we tie in with them or is it two separate entities or how does that work? Are we duplicating efforts? I mean, we collaborate on, on a, lot of, a lot of different projects together. Um, but, and as far as the ordinance, uh, am I wrong that the city of Charlottesville has one? The city of Charlottesville does, and there are many other cities and counties um, in Virginia that have ordinances. The committee, um, a few years back, um, committee members did some research on that. Um, we could pull that information back up. Um, it would be a little bit outdated um, right now, but um, my guess is that all the um, localities that are in that list would still have their ordinances in place. Um, and just to, just to be clear, um, when we talked about um, um, the demolition and, and um, sale, that, that was not um, 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 eliminating the, the ability to do that. It was, a, it's, it was talking about delay. So. Uh, no, no, I realize that. I realize that, but I, I'm not sure with some people how well that would go over. That's why I mentioned that. But okay. Betsy, to address your point, uh, Charlottesville is not, and please correct me, anyone, maybe Chris knows, Margaret knows, I do not believe that Charlottesville or any incorporated city is hindered by the Dillon rule. That applies only to counties. Yeah, there, there are, um, when the committee did that, the, the research a few years back, um, I believe the focus was on counties, and we can try okay. and pull that back up and, and get that information out to everyone okay. um, okay. over the next week. So. Any further comments on ordinance or comments on different different topics? Well, I think it would be great to look into ordinances and see what's out there and um, how it might apply to us. This challenge is the fact that we don't have someone in the planner position. Um, the idea that this would all be handled through a volunteer volunteer uh, board is, um, you know, I mean, it's just woefully inadequate. And, you know, even if you adopt an ordinance, who's going to handle that kind of thing? I mean, this is all of a sudden, this is a real job and a lot of responsibility. And there's no way that a committee can just do this. So B, I'm just asking, you know, what, what are, what if we were to just put out there, you know, reasons why this is important? Um, you know, if it's in the report, if it's in the comprehensive plan, then um, I mean, some, something is totally out of sync. Take it out of the plan if you don't mean it. 
you know, if you mm-hmm. really mean it, then take it out of the plan. It seems, uh, you know. Right, no, I I hear I hear what you're saying, Nancy. I'm just saying we're going through the budget process now, and it's uh, we went through the pandemic and we're high we're doing a lot a lot of hiring in the area of safety um, and safety and. I'm just being realistic. If you want to pursue that, absolutely. I was trying to give maybe a different avenue if that doesn't work. <laughs> uh, Margaret knows, Chris knows, uh, our budget is is tight. There's, um, I'm just being realistic. I, I'm not saying it's not a worthy cause. I'm just saying, I'm just being realistic. Mm-hmm. And I think there's ways to maybe slowly go about this to prove our need, so to speak. And maybe one of them is, uh, you said, Ross, you said the Piedmont Environmental or Piedmont Historic Preservation Committee. Preservation Piedmont. Piedmont. Right, and that operates, I mean, are we dupl- I ask again, are we duplicating efforts? Or if they have their own funding, I mean, why can't we develop our own funding through a, um, Historic Preservation Foundation. Uh, an interesting concept. It's not really one that the committee's discussed before, um, but it's certainly worth adding to the list of things. To- right. Well, and, and developed regarding the parks. We're looking at developing a parks foundation because we're also woefully lacking. Looks like we lost view. She froze up. The screen foundation. Foundation. Uh, B, you froze up there for a little bit. Can you repeat the last thing? Oh, I said if we can do a parks foundation to raise money uh, to have uh, fields, playing fields, additional playing fields, why can't we develop a historic preservation committee? Because different people in the county and city have different interests. Right. Yeah. Good question. Definitely something to look into. Pete? I'm sorry, real quick, and I, I apologize for joining late. Anyone who was taking minutes um, up to that point, I'll coordinate with them. I just want to confirm I'm taking minutes. I had one clarification, uh, Supervisor B, regarding the, the rule. I heard billing rule. That's probably not correct. I was, I was wondering if you could... Uh... Dylan. Dylan. D-I-L-L-O-N. Dylan rule. Thank you yes. very much. Uh, and yes. then the second point was I, I was looking to see if we have an action item on the research um, and whether I could assign responsibility for that. That Margaret, thank you. Yeah, Pete, um, I, that's a great um, to have those action items in the minutes. Very helpful. Other comments? How do we find out about this idea of a foundation? Um, you know, that sounds potentially like an avenue. Um, do Is that something we should try and pursue? See what, what's out there right now? Well, if you do, Margaret, do you know Valerie Long? Okay, she is on the police foundation and I'm sure there are others on the police foundation. So that could be a start to see how they did it, what's involved, et cetera. We can try and get that started. Is there someone on the committee who would like to look into that and provide contact information? I'll do it. Okay. I'll get with you, Nancy. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Other comments? Can, can I ask, is the idea at the end of this discussion that we're going to take that list that has 12 things on it, the, the top uh, 10 list, and are we going to, this is the time we're going to make adjustments to this? Uh, that will be, um, uh, that is a goal, certainly uh, one of the goals at the end. So um, we're 
taking this time now over the next couple of months to try and just work through some of these questions to get everybody talking and get some ideas together. And then we'll be working with the planners who are um, working more directly with the comp plan update um, and get this information to them and um, see how that can inform the comp plan um, revisions. Once we get the comp plan, um, um, the historic preservation plan would then um, come out of the comp plan and update. Um, we will be able to um, um, make revisions to the historic preservation plan after the comp plan. And once we get the historic preservation plan situated, um, that would be the more, that would include the more specific um, uh, recommendations and strategies. And then I, I would, well, depending how many there are, um, Yes, we might need to focus more on, on um, narrowing it down to another a different top 10. Um, I think part of the problem um, is that when you have a plan that has like 80 recommendations in it, that's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of tough. Because there were 80, we needed to boil it down to the, the most important 10. So it, you know, if we come up with a lot fewer than 80, then maybe there's different strategies. Um, to tackling it, I'm, I'm not sure. So sort of like to leave leave our options open for figuring out how to best, best tackle the recommendations we come up with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Who else has a comment? And you know, when you when you look at the comp plan, you know the the first objective, strategy one A, maintain a, a permanent historic preservation committee and reestablish a full time historic preservation planner. I mean, that was our number one, and that has not gone anywhere. Um, so, you know, I think we've written a, a lot of a lot of stuff that just some of it just doesn't stick to the wall. Um, I mean, these are all kind of our, our wish list, and it, it continues to be a wish list. So, I, I don't know what else we could add, um, other than you know, hoping to get, to get uh, more funds through the budget for historic preservation. Um, but I- That's a comment, a question. Um, I, I, if I could just comment, um, I wanted just to see if there was any other interest in sort of incentivizing property owners where they might be able to uh, apply for a degree of recognition for preservation that they had worked on their projects. That might be a way also of becoming less work on, on any of us as volunteers and the rest there, but it's more where the uh, property owners can submit what they've done or something, and then it could be kind of a recognition. Um, that might be a, a positive step. Uh, again, this is just an idea about trying to incentivize property owners uh, and some sort of sort of recognition that would just come from this committee uh, to property owners taking that that could be highlighted and um, I mean it could be something that it might just hang up on the refrigerator in the home but at the same time it could just be incentivizing for property owners yes uh, thank you Daniel for bringing that up do you go by Daniel or Dan anything but David <laughs> well, okay. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's actually a very, very good point because I know that there are a number of, of historic, semi-historic properties or that have been built over. They are actually uh, eyeing to do different things with their property. And I think that something from this committee saying that some of those properties have historic value would actually go a long way. And I, ha and I have no, 
I think they would be more than willing to submit an application with, you know, monetary payment, shall I say? Uh, because I think they would, they, they're looking for recognition that these are historic places. Some of the places you can't really tell because some of the records are gone. But at least if you, if you know that there is some history there, that can be maybe something from our committee, which is local. And I think uh, they would, I think there'd be a, a number of properties that would really um, like to have that. So I think that's uh, uh, an excellent idea. Uh, and other, even uh, de developers isn't the right term, but just uh, other individuals who do acquire a property are able to preserve it in a certain degree, taking steps. Um, I, I just think if, you, if there's a degree of recognition that this committee could, yes. and it recognizes uh, individuals who have taken the steps. Um, yes. How, how that would go, you know, I, I'm going to yield my time to other suggestions of how that would need to be. And, and I'm going to to address Ross's question. Um, you said you had your wish list. Is this a, a wish list from the because I'm new to the committee? Is this a wish list from the committee? And when did you submit it? Has it been a while? No, like it's not a wish. I mean, just looking at the comp plan items that we were addressing, a lot of from them the, are, from, are, from are the wish. last comp plan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so if it's from the last comp plan, we're now on our new comp plan. And I, I once again, I'm being a, a practical, I'm a pragmatist. So if that didn't work, let's try something else. Because we, we get a lot of demands and I'm trying to let us be successful, but maybe not going directly through your the wish list that you had set up because I'm not I'm not sure that how six submit it if you want but I'm not sure how how successful that will be I'm just I'm putting it out there guys well as I mentioned in the last meeting I like to correlate with land preservation and how that is done in the county and we could work with kind of similar programs for historic preservation so if we looked at the ACE program which is the conservation easements, um, which the county has funds which go into a bank that are allocated towards Albemarle County property owners that agree to put their land in conservation. There's, I think I'm, I'm, I'm on the, on the um, ACE uh, appraisal review committee. So they have money for that maybe there would be a way to allocate funds towards tax benefits for historic preservation, just like land conservation. Right, but remember land conservation is going to uh, address our climate uh, policy. Okay, so that will help there because you're not building, you're not destroying the land. So that's, that's a direct correlation there. Historic preservation, Diff different ballpark. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying Re different. recycling, recycling old buildings. I mean, I think that, <laughs> and they're not, you know, they're not going truckloads going to the dump. Right, right. No, I, I exactly. I just, uh, anyway, you know, yes. there's just something to mirror. You know, I'm just thinking of ideas that mirror land conservation. Um, which kind of is very similar to historic to the ACE. Okay, and you you know that the ACE committee is on hiatus probably until the fall. Right, it's yeah, been it's put on. Yeah, I'm, I'm bouncing out there. That's okay, fine. got it. Okay, thank you. I think that's a great idea, Ross. Um, you know that. You know, Daniel, I love your idea of, of giving recognition, but I don't think it's, you know, that's enough to, you know, make somebody change their mind about it. But if you put money out there in a tax break or, you know, some kind of tax benefit, um, people will look. I think that becomes really, that becomes a, a, you know, really viable, I think. The message I'm hearing is that there's no money available and there's no interest in or very little interest in historic preservation outside of this committee.
I, I don't know, Carter, if that's totally true, but I do know there are a lot of competing interests, I think, uh, on some areas. Uh, one of the things I learned from the last meeting is that if you have a private residence and it's preserved, but nobody else can see it, um, do you, do you want taxpayers dollars going into that to preserve it when no one else will have access to it? Why don't we organize a historic tour of sorts maybe and have um, the historic preservation committee sponsor, um, um, you know, a, a, you know, kind of like a garden week type thing, but um, just have a historic Admiral Kenny historic tour and um, see if any of the private land, you know, property owners would be willing to open their homes to share uh, their thoughts and ideas and, you know, show the, the beauty of what's being created. That's a good idea. I like that. That's a very good idea. Uh, at Grace Church, we have the yeah. farm tour. The farm so tour. That's that what made a terrific success. The, the right. net's coming up, and they're putting together their pamphlet, and they have advertisers and so forth. So maybe we could create a committee um, to kind of think of a uh, Admiral County Historic Tour, sponsored by the Admiral County Historic Preservation Committee. Right. Um, I know there would be a you know a lot of people that would like to um, to advertise in it, and then. We could, uh, you know, help help promote it and offset, you know, and cover the cost. Right. Great idea. Yep. Note taking question. Part of our discussion was about um, activities that could go into the the comp plan or or our top ten portion of that. Um, there was consensus around, um, especially uh, Ross's suggestion about the historic tour. Is that something that we would, is the takeaway that that would go into the top 10 list or that we would start discussing how that would work would be accomplished just in the committee because it doesn't require staff resources? What, what do y'all think? Maybe the top 10 list? Well, um, I, I'll just throw out there that I, I think um, what we're trying to do now is just think more broadly and just sort of throwing out whatever ideas you might have. Um, the, the, um, the top 10 list would be um, sort of a, um, a sort of a boiled down version of um, um, a larger um, set of, of recommendations. So I don't, I, 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 we're just trying to Think broadly now. Um, the top ten list will come later when we get more into specific details and and um, specific recommended actions. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And to add, even the even though the specific items are being mentioned, they can be kind of grouped or categorized into a larger, general, broad, broad kind of discussion of historic preservation that can relate to the comp plan and then ultimately probably could still use them in any top 10 or top whatever list that's created. Um, Carter, could I ask you um, about the comment that, that you made? Is that, when you say what you're hearing, is that just out in the world, outside of the committee or? Um... No, I was, uh... I was um, referring to uh, some of these comments, which I'm not taking, I mean, that's what I see in the world too. I think that, you know, I, I, I'm realistic as well. I, you know, I think if society as a whole is not interested in historic preservation, then, you know, that's, uh, then it's gonna be a difficult fight for those of us who are to, meaningfully influence policy. Um, so again, if you want to be realistic, that just seems we can say we want a planner, we can say we want this or that, but if there's no if there's no stomach for funding it, then we should probably come up with alternatives that don't cost anything. But yeah, I think in general, I do see in in my real estate work, I 
I see, you know, you'd be surprised. Everybody thinks they want an historic home, but it can be very difficult to sell an historic home. And the, the ones that you think would be the most appealing sometimes sit on the market for a long time. And, and meanwhile, you know, that new house in the subdivision that was just built last year flies off the shelves. And, and it's a, I can't explain it, but um, sometimes I feel like we're, we're swimming against the, the tide uh, a little bit. Thanks. If I could say, Peter, am I, am I being heard? So yeah, I'm like confused about this this committee because, quite honestly, there are other committee or other organizations, the Charles Albemarle Charlottesville Historic Society, you know, Preservation Piedmont, Center for Palladian Studies, Preservation Virginia. You know, they can do tours of home. I mean, why would we want to do that? We don't have any money. I mean, we're not going to offer anybody anything other than just, you know, the uh, agreement that Albemarle County is concerned about its historic preservation. And Carter, to your point, I mean, quite honestly, if you put these designations on some of these properties, it could inhibit, you know, future uh, development as well as uh, sales of uh, these homes. And, you know, while they're, it's valuable to remember the past, it's valuable to remember history, um, you know, it's, it's a concern. Betsy, you're absolutely right. It needs an ordinance, but, you know, to get an ordinance through on some of this stuff, I just don't see how it's going to happen. And, you know, I, uh, I'm certainly willing to listen, but it, to me, this is like, you know, it's recycling everything that we've been talking about, but it, it's a very meaningful discussion about what this committee is all about. And, you know, truly, you know, it is up between a rock and a hard place, in my opinion, um, because it's just, where can you take it from here other than giving people markers? Um, now I have a follow-on question because that's basically a summation, but I have a follow-on question. Hopefully somebody can answer. <clears throat> Pardon me. What relationship does this committee or Albemarle County have with university properties that are designated as landmarks? University being a big land owner, you know, within the county. Does anybody have any in insight on that? You're asking what, uh, I'm sorry. Can, can you... what, what, what do we have in terms of a relationship with the university at large? I'm aware of a property in the university's uh, purview um, that is a former um, plantation home um, that the university is not sure what to do with, doesn't want to commit funding to, uh, but it's a university property um, and it's called Sunnyside. Um, but it's also, uh, and it's also that the, the domicile of a thing called the, uh, um, Albemarle, uh, home for the poor, the foundation is a ruin. Um, it's, it's not designated, nothing's happening with it. It dates back, but it's, it seems in talking with university people that there's, um, no interest on the part of the university to do anything with it. Uh, because there's no, I mean, they don't want to, they, you know, what you're saying, D is absolutely right. It, they, they'd rather spend money on other things. So I, I just throw that out as a conversation point. I don't know what the relationship is, you know, with the university, but if you got a property like that, where, you know, four people were once housed and, uh, you know, it, it was a, uh, and evidently it, it was a, uh, farmed by a uh, slave labor, uh, you know, it would be an interesting thing. It would be an interesting thing to know whether the university has other properties like that. So, you know, anybody have any insight about what the university relationship with the county is on historic well, preservation? The, the university came to us regarding Birdwood when they were thinking of their preservation plans and they came to us and, and reviewed their preservation plan on Birdwood. Um, 
Sunnyside, I mean, that's always been house, housing for faculty members, if I'm not mistaken. What is the location uh, of Sunnyside? It's, it's on, on Barracks Road, across from the Exxon station. Uh, right, right before the bypass. If you're coming down the ramp of the bypass to go to Barracks Road, traveling east, uh -huh. you come down that ramp and you take a right to Barracks Road. There's a walking trail that runs right next to it. That's the, I forget what it's called, uh, Ravenna <laughs> Trail or something like that. It's behind Darden and behind um, the Army School, Jag School. It's right behind the Jag School. Yeah, I'm, I know. But I'm, what I'm trying to say is that there, the walking trail, I don't think is university property. I think it's somebody else's property. I'm not sure the university maintains a walking trail. Yeah. I don't the, know. The Rivanna Green Belt. If you go on the walking trail, you run into this foundation of ruin that's left there that was the Albemarle House home for the poor. Mm -hmm. anybody can go up to it but i just wonder you know in broad uh, terms what the relationship with the university is that's all uh, peter I, I don't know of um i know university and the county we do things separately and i don't know of anything where um i mean i could find out but um I, they usually do their own thing. The university does its own thing. So unless they're going to give us uh, that piece of property, they usually, there's a separating line. Ross probably knows more about this than I do, but you know, the university owns property in a number of different entities. Um, and it, it, some of it's tax, non-taxable. Others like the Real Estate Foundation is a different animal. Um, so it really depends on how it's own, who owns it, what entity, and and you know how they're how they're managing it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I they, could get, try you know, they get willed a lot of properties that mm -hmm. they have no desire in keeping, and they just turn around <laughs> and sell them. I mean, that happens all the time. Right. I think Margaret or, or Ross. I think Felissa had a comment. I saw her square light up. Okay, Felissa. Can't, can't hear. Melissa, you're breaking up. We can't hear you. I'll text her. I was going to say, I'll, I'll try and do a little bit of research on the ownership of the um, Sunnyside property and fill you in. But yeah, you know, uh, uh, the university is, is the powerhouse that doesn't need any partnerships. <laughs> so, um, you know, maybe we'll be asked once in a while for input on certain projects, but it's not like we have uh, any direct communication with the real estate department or the, or the real estate foundation, which as Carter mentioned is a separate entity. Um, they've, you know, they're, they're sitting on Birdwood, which is a, a fabulous historic manor house that, you know, they're too busy right now buying and allocating funds to other areas of, of the campus and historic preservation has not been high on their list. Um, if it was, they would have bought like Lewis Mountain, for an example, which is uh, right overlooking the lawn at the university. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, we, we don't have any real, real ties to any um, historic departments with the university. And if Ed was here, he would have something interesting to say, but unfortunately he's not. But um, maybe that's a comment for Ed uh, to discuss um, you know, our, our next, uh, our next meeting, he might have some helpful insight. So it's the, I know there's a, a historic preservation certificate that the university offers to the planning department. So you can take landscape architecture, planning architecture, and you can also 
take a few courses in historic preservation and add a certificate of historic preservation along with that. And then of course, there's the university's Department of Architectural History, which is fantastic. Does anybody have any comments on other topics? Anybody we haven't heard from yet? You know, I think as, as a committee, all we can really do at this point is, is help with for awareness and um, anyway, any any ideas of, of, of ways just to, to shed light on historic preservation is something we can at least do if we're not going to be moving mountains with with funds in the in the county um any any idea or you know resource we can share we certainly should try to do so yeah and i think to that end you know the the one thing that i picked up on from earlier in the conversation um i think we'd all like to stop these demolitions happening but realistically that doesn't seem possible at least in the near term. So I think that what this committee can do is what, what Ross and Ed are already doing, which is documenting these properties and, and making sure that something is kept for posterity before they're gone. And then I thought it was a great idea to have a space on the website where all that information can be accessible by the public. I mean, that, that in and of itself is a service to the county and to the history. Um, so I think that's a great idea. And, you know, if we can't stop the demolitions, at least we can, um, you know, uh, save, save something of the properties that are being lost. Yeah, I, I think what we're doing is, you know, we're making awareness. And I think, unfortunately, that's all we can do right now. And these are all methods of, of showing people that demonstration we had, that exhibit we had for the Albemarle County anniversary of uh, lost properties was was very powerful and um you know it didn't reach a whole lot of people but the message was 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 done very well and um you know we're not going to save the world but i i think if we can create more awareness to our historic resources and how valuable they are um for the county in the in the long term um is, is all we can do and I, you know every little bit helps. I don't think an ordinance is, is realistic. Um, we don't have the backing or the funds to, to even get close to doing something like that. But um, you know maybe you know we can, we can find other ways to at least promote preservation and uh, enhance awareness. I have a, a question. I was able to contact uh, Felissa. Her question is, uh, do we know the number of local historic properties the UVA Foundation has in its portfolio? Ed, Ed would, Ed's our, 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 our answer to that. He would have probably a okay. full list. Um, so we'll know next time? Um, we, we could certainly ask him, yeah. Okay. And, and I will... Um, I will address Carter's question because for me, I don't see why anyone would not want to preserve historic properties, especially from the 1700s, 1800s. Um, where I came from, we didn't have that. It was 50 years old, it was old. So this is fantastic. And I don't understand why we wouldn't want to do it, but <clears throat> Carter addressed that by saying some people don't want to and that may hinder a sale of a home, um, which is sad. Uh, you know, I, I, why wouldn't someone want to preserve that home? I, I don't know. So it's a, uh, it I guess it's a- it, it can be very costly and, yeah. and um, you know, there's a lot of different reasons. I'll let Carter answer it, but there's, there's a lot of incentives to protect land. So there's a lot of financial incentives um, to like I, I'm trying to mirror conservation of land with preservation of property. There's a lot of financial incentives to protect the land. 
there's not those incentives to protect mm -hmm. historic structures. Right. Well, if we did form a historic preservation foundation, that still doesn't stop us from trying to go after monies that the county has. Sure. Yeah, I worked, um, I had some properties listed years ago for, uh, oh, what's the organization in Richmond? It might be Preservation Virginia. Um, but they have a revolving fund where they, they buy properties that are endangered and they put easements on them saying they can't be demolished and then they turn around and sell them. Um, but I mean, that's, you know, that takes a lot of fundraising to establish that initial bank that can then, um, you know, go out and buy a property for two, three, four hundred thousand dollars and hold it for a period of time until it sells. Um, so that's one model, but I, yeah, I don't know that this committee is in a position to do something like that. You're, you're correct, it's Preservation Virginia. Uh, one, one comes to mind is Old City Hall in Richmond. They did something similar to that. That they bought it, in, I guess, in the 70s or so, and then held it for a so, certain amount of time and then sold it. But yeah, that's a large task or order. I mean, look at another idea. Sorry to interrupt, but look at our land use program. That's designated to preserve land for agricultural use. What if there was some kind of incentive for historic preservation where there was some kind of a, a county tax credit on, on real estate tax um, to, in, to promote historic preservation of some sort, um, just as we're trying to promote agricultural use for land? I'm just trying to show correlations with- in, Incentive is, incentive, uh, is, is key. Um, yeah. Without sure. that, whether it be intrinsic from the owner themselves or tax motivation or recognition, um, I, I stand very firmly by the belief that uh, any traction that this committee can do to further its mission centers around incentivizing some uh, some form of incentive. Mm -hmm. Like land use taxation, uh, historic preservation use taxation. I don't know. We are just about at uh, the end of our discussion period in terms of time that we've got listed on the agenda. Does anybody have any final comments at this point? I, I think I just wanted to say it's good for us to, to be able to speak ideas because I think we all help each other think of other ideas and avenues to, um, to, to get us uh, more ideas together and to co collaborate on that. So thank you everybody for, for all your input. And, you know, let's just keep thinking of ways, you know, I, I, I think we, 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 our goals have to be very modest and within our means. And um, some of these elevated goals are, are really unrealistic and maybe we should find um, in, in, in ourselves what, where we can make the change with with the power and the ability we have. Um, I don't, you know, again, a, an ordinance is is kind of a, an unrealistic, lofty goal um, with the um, with all the resources we have here in Albemarle County at, at the present time um, with the historic um, segment, but. Um, any ideas that we can come up with just to promote preservation is what we're here for. So, you know, I don't think we're gonna move move mountains, but we can always improve our um, educating the public and, and, and the promotion of uh, protecting our historic resources. So along those lines, um, can we start the real estate letters again? Yeah, we, we're working on that. They. Um, we're, we're getting those information to Chris um, and Margaret, and um, we'll be getting those back out. Yeah, I think we've worked out the kinks to restart the start sending out the notifications. Okay, great. Thank you. And yeah, and um, Carter, we're not going to lose anything. We're just going to have a lot of letters to send. Catch <laughs> up. Got it. So, okay. so we were tabulating all the all the all the ones and we'll we'll get those back in circulation 
Nancy. Along, along the lines of what you're saying, Ross, it seems to me that um, the, you know, we're pretty limited in what we can do, but we have a website. And a website is something that, um, you know, allows us to reach out to a heck of a lot of people. So I wonder if we couldn't use that website a little bit more proactively, a little bit more decisively, you know, about what the problem is, what, what we're doing here and why we're doing it. Um, you know, the idea of having an award that we post, you know, and that was brought up at the last meeting. I thought that was great. We should do it and we should celebrate it on the website. And, you know, um, I think the website is actually, you know, kind of attractive and it's, it, 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 it sort of, but it's, it's, um, it's not really doing any, it's not really pushing, pushing a mission very well. So I think we should, I think we should take some time to look at that and see what we can do. I think that's a good point. I mean, the, the website is our voice and what better way to be heard than make sure that we have a lot of content um, and um, a message. And, you know, so I think that's great. I think uh, let's kind of break down that website and see what kind of a, a tree or an outline we can make with that um, to make it kind of organize a lot of different information that we can get out. So I think that's an excellent uh, comment, Nancy. I guess I, I would add, uh, it's, I think, possible to make some um, website updates. Um, we, don't, we don't have to wait to do some of those updates um, until the comp plan's adopted. If, if we have specific ideas on some um, um, improvements um, now we can um, work towards doing that. Can we put that on the agenda for next meeting and everybody have a look at the website and right. let's let's see what we can add, change, and correct and and enhance. Yeah, I think Nancy, you're right. That's that's certainly the first place people look for us. So we better have our A game on our website. Mm -hmm. It's our identity. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you all for all those comments. Um, really appreciate the discussion. Great. Thank you. Um, do we have time to go over any new historic property owners that anybody knows of? Mm -hmm. um, threatened properties to watch? Any recent dem demolished structures? Um, otherwise, our, our next meeting for the Historic Preservation Committee will be virtual and will be um, held on uh, April 25th, uh, 2022. If that's okay with everybody, we are hereby now adjourned. Is that right? Very good. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Bye. Thank you.